Hey guys, it's Ellen here, and it's Monday, so it's Mini Monday Madness time. We're working on this fun little diptych, um, super easy, impressionistic, you know, watercolor floral. You can use it as one little picture or two together. You know, it's just so simple and easy. There's no traceable needed, just a lot of just pushing paint and color around and moving your brush. If you have any questions, please leave in the comment section. Please don't forget to hit the bell notification button to know my tutorials are up. Also, please check out my Patreon, which is up here. Yep. I have um, ad-free videos, traceables, and exclusive tutorials on Thursdays on my Patreon for Patreon members. So check it out. It's a place people can go and support my channel and it's extra content. So I really appreciate it. So without further ado, let's get painting. All right, guys, I'm gonna go over my supplies. I have a piece, oh, well, actually two pieces of Arsh, 100% cotton cold pressed paper, three inch squares. I just taped down with scotch tape, um, just your basic old scotch tape. I just put it on a piece of cardboard so you can see the, the paper better. I have my palette here, my paints, my paper towel, water jars up here. Um, the paints I'll be using, I'll be using a bunch of different ones. I have ultramarine deep blue, I have Verdier blue, I have Quinacridone magenta, Cabernet deep, maybe some burnt umber, probably some Prussian blue also. Um, working with a couple of brushes, I love using my Princeton Eight Long Round Velvet Touch series, and I'll probably use the Golden Edge um, Grumbacker number ten round for the sky area. This is kind of based off of one I did a while ago. If you go scroll through all my mini Mondays, you'll see like this you know, bright yellow, orange wildflower field. It didn't have a sky, it was kind of, I left it white, but I think this one was just, cause we're gonna do purples and blues, we can make a sky. So let's try this out. And there's no need for a traceable for this one. It's just pretty straightforward. We're just gonna use paint and put it on paper. So you can use whatever blue you liked for a sky. I have a um, peacock blue over here. I have all these, I have peacock blue here, ultramarine here and verdier blue. I like the ultramarine blue too. I might water the peacock and the ultramarine down together. Put a lot of water here. So I want a very light sky. Mix the two. I'm just gonna play around just adding it. Here we go. I'm gonna to grab some water as I put that paint down. And I'm just doing wet on dry. I'm just gonna go do the sky area like halfway or three fourths of the way up. I'm gonna go across both of them. It's like a diptych. You know, and you could frame the two paintings, I mean, side by side. You could do four of them or three of them. So I've got the light wash down here now. See, just putting this down with this vert, with this Grumbacker brush. Let me zoom in a little bit for you guys. So it's just a, a simple color. At this point, I can go in and add some more color. You know, I make it a little bit darker, not too much. Kind of what you do over here, you kind of kind of go across like it's one piece. Pretend that the, that these two separate pieces are one piece. If you wanted to put clouds in, you can do clouds. It's up to you, you know. And there's so many different ways to do clouds. You can just take the paper towel and lift up the paint really simply like this. Or you can use a brush to do that. Put in some little clouds. Or you could just keep it a bright blue sunny day. Again, I'm going to add some more paint again. So it's drying pretty light. Do that. So I can go back over that if I didn't like, if I didn't want to have clouds. You know, just want a pretty blue sky, which I think I'm going to do. I don't necessarily want to have clouds. All right, so you get the blue down. And if you want to make them darker on the sky up top, lighter, like I said, you can go back in and add some ultramarine up top. Ooh. Get it really wild, the color. But it doesn't necessarily have to be the case. So, on the bottom area, of course, we can be adding, let's mix up some paints, many different colors. Here we go. I have my cadmium yellow deep, getting it really activated. I'm going to put it over here. I'm gonna add some blues to that to make it green. Uh, I like the peacock blue with it because it makes a nice pretty green. The ultramarine will make it a little more brownish green. Um, so you want a good amount of this. 
And if you had Prussian blue to that, it gives it a deeper green tone. See that? And then if you add a little burnt umber, which I have over here, or in kind of brown, a little bit of red, you get this dark, deep green. So working with a bunch of different greens. Also at the same time, I have the cadmium, excuse me, Quidacono magenta. I'm gonna get some water on this. And I'm gonna add some ultramarine to that and get a beautiful purple. So I've got all these colors kind of all done right now, all mixed up. And there's a reason for that. So now we're gonna take our ground back. Okay, so it's dry, fairly dry. There may be a little splotches here that aren't dry. I can go back in and grab some of that yellow again. See, that's mixed in with the green, very pale, yellowish green, chartreuse kind of color. And you can kind of tap that. Maybe even more yellow. In between those white areas, And you could add the blue to make it pretty pale green if you want. See, bright green. See, I'm just tapping in those areas. One more yellow. Just like that. Now I'm going to take the um, number eight. Princeton long round brush. I'm going to start making up this just simple swipes like this of stems for more flowers. So I have the, like I said, the yellow. We can make that darker green. We have that green color here that we mix with yellow with the peacock. You can add some Prussian blue when you get this nice dark green. Just keep mixing it, or you just use a green that you have. And make a nice deep green. And now I'm using very minimal water here. You can see it's not as loose as the other ones. I tap in paper towel. I'm just making these swipes. I might add a little more blue, actually. I want a little darker. I need a little bit of brown. Very concentrated. So, again, so it's got a nice point on it. See, swipe, swipes, swipes. Just like that. La la la. Go crazy how you want to swipe it. You go from the bottom to the top, middle. It's just like that. Bend it. Try not to make it too thick. You could actually put little branches off each one of them. Also, get a little creative. It doesn't have to just be this one particular kind of stiffy stick looking thing. You can add little branches, like I said, off of some of them. And also leaves. So we've got this. So you can add little leaves to those little stems if you want. I, like again, I wouldn't make it so um, loose. A little less water, more concentrated color. And I put little leaves. Just like so. And you can start to put some of that green down in here too. Just like that. You can just kind of tapping with your brush. You're not really doing anything specific. See? Just kind of like back and forth. The leaves. The long stem. Ta ta ta. See, I'm just kind of really just tapping this little color of paint just to mimic leaves. Very impressionistic looking. Very simple like that. Tap, 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 tap. See? Tap, 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 tap. Pushing down on the brush a little bit so they make bigger ones, smaller ones, if I don't push it on them. There you go with that. Now you can go and add some of the flowers. Since blues and purples work well together, that's why I decided to do that. So I have the blue ultramarine mixed with my um, quinacrino magenta, and I'm making nice purple again. Again, with these little flowers, just this brush, just making these little See? Tap, tap, tap. Purple. You can do another simple flower. Let me get some color here. With this brush, just push down and over here like a V and add like a little top. So you're pushing down like that. See? You can add more magenta, less of the blue. 
And you want to add a little more water so it gets a little bit lighter. See? Just making these little marks and not doing anything that's super special. You could do something like really special with, you know, intention. Little round circles kind of look like hollyhocks if they want to be like this. See? It doesn't have to be. And then down here also, you just kind of like play around with tapping in color. And it can be darker, it can be lighter, purple, the pinks and purples. Play around with adding blue. See, I'm adding some concentrated ultramarine. And I'm just tapping in the color. It has that impressionistic style. That's what I'm going for. I'm going for like a wildflower field. That's purples and blues and pinks. See? And just go over here, same thing. You can really kind of just tap in a color, or you can have intention, like I said, make it circular, add little petals. You want to make it more like a daisy. Just be creative with it. But it doesn't have to be the serious flower. See, and I'm just going to play around with keep adding ultramarine and taking it away, adding more magenta. It can just be really dark. You see that blue in this one section? It's different from the other side. So if you did want to have them separate, like just entities, or you could have them together. See, just taking that ultramarine blue. It's really pretty with these colors. Just going like that. See? I love it. <laughs> I don't know, I don't like to wear the color purple, but I love to paint it. It's just one of those things, I guess. And see, I'm just kind of wiggling the brush and moving it around. But it gives you that feel. That blue is really great, that ultramarine deep. And you can go in and grab, clean up my brush, and you can just grab some of that magenta. Water that down a bit. Put some of that in, you get that bright pink. Just playing around. See, I'm just tapping, tap, 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 tap. And then I'm gonna go back in and add some yellow again. I feel like it's this section over here, I got a little muted. It needs a little yellow. I'll clean up my brush. I'm just gonna grab some, it's kind of like yellowish green, but still more yellow. Put some of that in here. It's just coming alive. Yellow, purples, and blues are great, and reds. This pink thing. Go back and grab some of that green color. And again, some more yellow. Let's play around with it. See, it's very concentrated. There's minimal water, so I can go right on top of those colors. You don't think you can do that with watercolor because you think watercolor is too opaque, but you can, you can play around with it. You wanna splatter some white gouache on here too, you could do that. Uh, another little sneaky trick I show you, you can take the white gouache. Right, I'm gonna activate some of this. I have some white gouache over here. And you could add it to your watercolor. You got the pink. So now it makes it like pale, and then you can go on top of it just like that. See how sneaky? We're very sneaky. This has such an impressionist quality to it. The pinks and blues. See, you can go back in here. I'm just tapping it. See, I'm not doing anything special. But boy, what a cute little look, right? Get that pink in there. Let me add some more in here. You can add some up there. I want you guys to just play, play, play. I grab some of that ultramarine, which I really love. Kind of put some in down here. It's just little taps, and we've created like this beautiful flower field, which really didn't take much time at all. Um, if you want to give it as a gift to somebody, I'm sure they would appreciate it. See, I even still have the gouache in here. I'm adding the blue, and you get that pale purple. And you can go on top. 
And like I said, you can make more flowers with intention. It doesn't have to be these little taps. You can add some other colors up here. And change the vines. They can go this way, that way. You can add some brown. Let's see, you can have one that's come way up here like this. If they all seem to be going like they look too similar and you're kind of like, oh, it's kind of boring. Let's put some out there and then grab some light pale greens and leaves just to change it up because it doesn't have to all be in this way. And I'll add some of the flowers here. Just like that. So then we're going to let this dry and take off the tape. I don't want to make you suffer through the noise of the tape and see what we have. So I lifted up the tape and also before that I added some more yellows and pinks. We can just play around with this. And look how pretty that looks. You could do this. It doesn't have to be a three inch square. You can do this in a bigger size piece of paper. You can do it as a bookmark. You guys should play around with it. It's so much fun. So I hope you guys enjoyed this mini Monday Madness tutorial. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. And also, please don't forget to hit the bell notification button to know my tutorials up. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. Take care, and I'll speak to you soon.